I mean, how much different is this than a sombrero, really? Pretty different. <laughs> nope, no different. This is a sombrero. I'm done. Sombrero. Hi, I'm Christian. When I was a little kid, I joined Cub Scouts. And then I quit. And I'm not totally sure why I quit, and I've kind of always regretted that decision. So here's my idea. I want some adventure, but I can't become an official Boy Scout. So I'm gonna do it all on my own. I'm gonna do the entire curriculum of Scouts from Cub all the way up to Eagle in one year. It's called Old Scout. Welcome to Old Scout number 26, uh, the first week of merit badges. Uh, for this first merit badge, I'm going to do the basketry merit badge. Um, so for that, I need to weave a basket and I need to cane this stool. So uh, the first step for caning this stool is I need to get the cane soaking in water for a couple minutes to soften it up and then I can get to caning. That's heavy. <laughs> All right, so I have my first piece of cane here. I got my written instructions here. Then I got my picture instructions here. So I'm going to just start. So I'm going to put it through about three inches. Put a peg to hold it in place. And then I'm going <laughs> to fingers are already dirty. <laughs> Put a peg here. Okay, so now I need to do my first splice. So I need to take this end that I've already completed and weave it under an already completed loop. A couple times. Okay, so I've finished my first vertical row and now I gotta start my horizontal row, so I'm gonna go underneath and come up through here. Okay, so now I gotta do second vertical. So now I gotta go back over the first verticals. Is that mm -hmm. right, Julie? Okay. Okay, now I'm in the first weaving step. It's sort of way more complicated. <laughs> Okay, so I'm almost done with step four, and I've learned a lot in this step about weaving it. Learned a lot about the material, how brittle it gets, um, how moist it needs to be before it, if it gets too moist, it starts to fall apart. Oh, 
that just broke. Uh, it's just way harder at the ends here than it is in the middle because the the gap in between each over under is so much smaller. And so the tension is higher. See in the rows before this I could pretty elegantly like shuttle shuttle it through rapidly. I'm kind of having to snake it through because of so much tension. And then I kind of tennis racket it into place a little bit. Oh, it broke. Oh no. It broke. Broke. Oh no. It broke. Oh. Oh man, this is a frustrating project. It's like. It was going so well. Yeah, yeah, when it's going well, it's peaceful. And then it breaks at the end of the. Like, just break on the third one, not the 15th one. So you can kind of shuttle through a couple, and but then you it gets like a little too hard to shuttle, and um, and at, at about the same time it gets too hard to shuttle. That also just seems to mean that you need to pull the slack because there's too much tension, and if you try to pull the slack, if there's too much tension, then it will break. Okay, just finished the first diagonal pass, um, but we're out of daylight. So uh, we're going to resume the next part tomorrow morning. Christian. Yesterday when I walked in the neighborhood, some houses had mountains of garbage. Oh. It made our little pile look normal.
still curious about what it would be like to use new cane uh, because it does seem like this cane is somewhat brittle at times and makes me nervous every time I get to this exact point here. That time it didn't break. It's only taken us about, it's probably about the eight hour mark with yesterday and today. But honestly, it goes by fast because it's it's like it is it is fun when it's when you're in the groove it is fun. Yeah, and when it's not breaking on you. Yeah. I think it looks really real. It'll look really good once you do the binding too. Yeah. So now we got to do the binder around the edge. If I try to go through the hole and then pull it all the way tight. Then when I go back down through the hole, I'll run into what I just did. But if I leave it kind of loose here and then get it through the hole, there's a lot more daylight. I don't collide with myself. Oh. How are you faster than me now? I don't know. I have practiced more. This is fun. This one, this is the most fun step, I think. In my mind, I'm done. And I'm very happy with it. It's very, it feels very strong. I'm really glad we got to do this binding on the edge. I feel like that made it much stronger and also um, much more finished looking. I feel like that kind of furniturized it. Like before that, it was kind of like craft project. Like it feels much more like a piece of finished furniture instead of a kid craft. Mm-hmm. Well, it took two days. Cane this stool. Now let's go weave a basket. Now I gotta weave a basket. So I'm going to weave a small reed uh, basket uh, and I'm going to use the wicker weave method. So the first step is to soak the reed, which is the material, uh, in water for about 30 minutes uh, and then I can start weaving. It's been about 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, of soaking and it, uh, all the reed feels uh, pretty pliable. So I have six 36 inch uh, number four thickness reeds. Those will make up my spokes. Then I have one short spoke uh, and then I have several dozen feet of reed. I've soaked some of it here and then I'll soak more as I need it. That's number two thickness. Um, so now I can get started on the first step. Step one, locate the center of the spokes and form a cross. Um, so there's my cross and then move on to step two. So I'm going to put the odd spoke which makes it so that it is an odd number of spokes uh, mostly in the center and then we'll go out to the edge. For step three it says Using a long weaver, bind the spokes with four wraps. So that's two wraps. Step three is complete. It looks so cool. Okay, so for step four, I need to separate the spokes so that they appear like the spokes of a wheel and begin to weave under and over. Do not pull the weaver too tight, rather weave closely. Okay, so I'm going to come back around here, over the first, under the second, and then over the third. Feels mighty tight. And very unwieldy. <laughs> So, under, then under. Nope. Right? Mm -hmm. First step is just kind of hard because it's so tight in there that it's like, it's more like a zigzag and less like 
a weave. I'm struggling through. And I think, I guess that's just because like the spokes haven't spread out yet. Hey dog. You know, there's always that joke of college football players taking easy classes like basket weaving. Yeah. I'm not so sure it was so easy. <laughs> oh, it's looking good now. Yeah, it's looking much less zigzaggy. You can like very seriously get into some flow state with this. When I get to the end here, Take my new weaver and put it just sort of right on top this one and by the time I weave one rotation around then this new weaver should be integrated into the weave. There we go. Yeah, that feels hard. that feels sturdier. Okay, it looks pretty baskety. I mean, it has. I haven't started sloping it up upwards, and I mean, it doesn't look baskety. It looks very hot plate trivity, current <laughs> trivity. Uh, but I'm gonna start sloping it upwards. Okay, so I think that completes the weave of my bowl. Let's check the diameter. Nine inches, exactly. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty good, we did, did not check that beforehand. <laughs> so now I just need to finish it off with uh, a scalloped edge. Behind, front of. I think the basket is complete. Gotta say, kind of proud of it. I didn't know at the beginning of today that I was capable of making a basket out of like wet sticks. <laughs> uh, so I'm pretty proud of it. I also didn't realize how much fun it would be uh, to weave a basket. I thought it might be kind of like drudgery and I was very pleasantly surprised. Can't wait till it dries. <laughs> okay. All right, good job. Thanks.
Are you hooked, Julie? Mm -hmm. Are you locked in? Mm -hmm. <laughs>